So welcome back aliens, I'm Navin Raji from Thaisko Learnings and in this video, oh I will not tell you that now, let's have a big suspense. Now what I will do now is I will create a scenario where we will try to solve that problem using one of the concepts. Again you must have seen that uh, in the title but then again it's a virtual surprise for you or maybe suspense. So what we will do here is we will create a class and we will name this class as laptop. Now in Java what we do is we create a class and we create variables and we create methods right. What I will do here is I will create a uh, I will create those variables with the help of constructor itself. So I will say this is val again I'm going for val we can go for val as well. Uh, I'm going for val for this for this example I'm going for brand. So every laptop needs a I mean uh, sorry every uh, every laptop needs a, uh, has a brand right. So I will say this brand type is string and the second thing is a uh, laptop will have a price right and that's very important the brand and the, and the price. Okay so we once we got this two we, once we got these two values in the constructor what I want to do here is let me create a function called as show and this function will print whatever message you want to print. In fact we don't need this function any, uh, anything here but then just to have something in the class let me print awesome laptop awesome what's that awesome machine maybe I love my machine okay so we have this we have we are, we are printing awesome machine right so we got a we got a brand and we got a price here okay so what I do is uh, let, let me create objects for this so let me get the first object I will say where I will get my first object as laptop one equal to and the way you can create object here we can say laptop and you can pass two variables right I mean two values I will say the first brand is Dell okay I love Dell brand and the cost of is is two thousand dollars again I don't know the exact price for Dell machines but then let's say we have Dell and we have two thousand dollars I can talk I'm talking about high-end machines here now what happens when you print the LAP1 as it is okay so I'm not using uh, okay what is that okay so I'm printing a, a lab one now now I'm not saying I, I'm not printing the values I'm printing the reference as it is okay the, the moment you do this the moment you run this code Let's run this. Let's say run, and okay. In the address and in, in the console, you can see we are not getting the values of Dell machine. We are not getting the value of Dell and 2000. We are getting a hash code, right? So remember, remember this problem. The problem is when you try to print a reference, it only gives you a address and a class name with it. Now this address means uh, the hash code, right? Now you might be wondering uh, that's how it that's how it works, right? In Java as well we do the same thing we it prints the reference address it, it prints the hash code now how to solve this problem there is one may one way you can solve this problem is by using a two string method right and we have done that before i mean when i say before i'm talking about java so in java we know that we create two string methods the first problem is every class needs so let me just write it here so the first point is every class needs a two string method right because we want to print the values Again, we will, we will not do it here. Let's say we need a we need a two string method. Let's go with second problem. The second problem is if I create one more object here, we'll say var lab two equal to laptop, and then we'll say this is Apple comma two thousand five hundred. Let's say we have this different machine which is Apple and brand is Apple, and then they, we got the prices two thousand five hundred. Now, of course, when you print lab one, lab two, now both will print the hash code. We don't want that. My main concern here is I want to check if both these objects are same. The, the way you can do that is by using println and in println we can compare these two. So we can say lab1 equal to equal to lab2. Now this is how you compare two objects right. So we are, we are comparing lab1 and lab2 here. And if you run this code, uh, okay so it is printing false. Can you see that in the output window we got false and that makes sense. These two are, these two objects have two different values. You can see we have del. 2000 we got Apple 2500. Now what if if I make this Dell I mean this Apple as 2000 uh, Dell and then if I set the price as 2000. Now as you can see we got two objects now and both these objects has the same uh, I mean this they have the same values. Now when I compare two objects of course right if two if two objects have the same value they should be equal right and if you run this code now at least we should get equal now oh unfortunately again we got false because these two are still not equal. Now if you remember in Java what we do is whenever you want to compare two objects and when you say those are equal 
you have to define two methods. One is you have to override those two methods. The first method is you need to override a uh, equals method and you need to and you need to override a uh, hash code method. Okay. Now why equals is because a uh, hash code C capital. Now why equals is because sometimes you uh, you also you also compare two objects with the help of equals method, right? This is one way of comparing the uh, comparing the objects. I mean, if you if you want your object to be exactly same, double equal to will make sense. But then if you have two laptops and these two laptops has everything same except the price, maybe you have some more parameters, CPU, RAM, but then because of different sellers, we have different price. Still those two laptops are same, right? In that case, you should be using dot equals because that will make more sense. Okay. So yeah, so we got uh, lap one dot equals lap two. And still if we, do, if we run this code, again, you, you will get false because even if those values are same, we are getting false because of what it checks is it checks for the hash code. And since both this object has different hash code, it is, it is printing false. So what I want is if you want to make it work, first of all, you want to print the object values by using, by just printing the object. So you, you need two string method. You also need equals and hash code method. You need these two things, right? And the third one is maybe you want to achieve a concept of cloning. Now what is cloning in Java is if you got this one object here, which is laptop. And if you want one more object, let's say, okay, let's say, let's change these values. Let's say this is Apple again, and this is 2,500. And if I create a new object, now this two, this new object, which is VAD lab three, I want this to have the same value as laptop one. So I will say lab one dot copy. Oh, can you see that we don't have any method called copy. So we want a method like copy or maybe clone, but unfortunately you can see we are not getting those methods here. So I want this thing as well. I want my, I want to create a clone also, but it is not there. So what we can do is uh, we need a copy method as well. So if you want to make it work, the things which we need here is first of all, I want to print the objects. So I want to string. I want to compare two objects. So I want to override equals and hash code. I want to, I also want a copy method, right? So it's a very big video now. Again, you can see that in fact, uh, it's a very, lots of things are remaining, right? So the thing is we have to define all those things, right? And if in Java, you have to define everything by yourself. Now Kotlin says, Hey, don't worry. Now everyone has the same problem, right? Everyone want to create the same thing. So if you want something, uh, you need, if you want a class where you want two string method, where you want equals and hash code, where you want copy, it's very easy. Just write data in front of your class. The moment you write data, can you see that we got a copy method? There is no problem in that. And when you compare these two objects now, of course, those are the, those two objects are different. Let's compare Dell and with the same price. So I'm comparing lab one, lab two. I'm also creating lab three object. And let me also print lab three object just to see if it is working. So we should be getting two string method as well, right? So if I say lab three and the moment you run this code, and can you see that we got true and it is also printing the values of the laptop just by writing one keyword that is data. I mean, just imagine how powerful it is. Again, for small example, I know it doesn't make sense, but then the moment you create big applications, maybe if you're creating big entity class, this will be, this, this is an awesome concept. In fact, I used to face these issues a lot in when I used to make projects because every time if I create multiple entities, you know, uh, let's say if you, if you're building a big project in that, maybe you'll be having 50 to 60 entities for different, different aspect, right? And if you create those entities, you have to override two string method. You have to override equals and hash code, then clone as well. Again, uh, if you are using some, any modern IDE, maybe Eclipse, NetBeans or IntelliJ, this code is given by your IDE itself, but still you have to manage those code, right? Because if you change something, how would you know which code is given by your IDE and which code you have written? So it will be difficult for you to manage. And that's why Kotlin says, don't worry. Everything is running behind the scene. You just have to use a data keyword. So this type of classes are called as data classes. Now what is data class? Data class is same as normal classes. Okay. There's nothing different. As you can see, I'm defining this function. The only purpose of defining that function there is to show you that this is a normal class. Okay. Don't think data class is something very different. Data class is data, data class is class. The only advantage what you get is every a data class by default has a two string method. It by default has equals and hash code implementation. It also has a copy method. So this is how we use copy here.
right? So copy, what copy will do is it will create a new object of lab three and it will have the values of the first laptop, which is Dell and 2000 because you are copying that object. But let's say if you want to copy the same object, but one different value, I want to change this 2000. I want to change this to a price of 2200. In that case, you can mention that you can say price equal to, I want a different price. I want to go for 2200, not, oh, what's that? Enable city? No, not now. So 2200, right? And now if you run this code, lab three will print 2200, right? So we, it got Dell because we are using copy, but the price is changed. You can, you can change the price as well. So this is that powerful. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, data class thing. So if you have any more queries, let me know in the comment section. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you're subscribed to the channel because there are lots of videos on the way.